the, 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 the cathedral of the clavichord. It's so welcome to a new episode of Your Time Q&A. In this episode, I have a question from David Rogers and I need the assistance of Anya. So David is a piano builder and uh, he asked very interesting questions, so a lot of them. But what in, what is interesting to demonstrate practically is the question that he asked for a demonstration of the tone of the instrument when you play something like the E minor G, which is referring to five books to it, I, or another piece, I think, but with the damping cloth on the sympathetic strings and then play it again with the sympathetic strings free. I'd love to hear the variation in sound. And so what he's talking about is actually this damping cloth, this piece of leather, which I lay on the sympathetic sounding strings. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's this section of the strings of the clavichord. So you have the bridge here. And so the length of the, uh, of the string, of the tone, actually, I will remove the desk so you can, yeah, thank you. So from the moment the tang and tangent hits the string, there is a length from here to the string, from here to here. So the string is blocked, so to say, on this point and on the point of the tangent. And this is actually the vibrating part, which uh, gives you the pitch of the tone. Everything that's beyond the bridge has actually no influence on the pitch, but it has an influence on the sound and the way that these strings there, parts of those strings, are sounding with the main part of the vibrating string, so to say. So that's the reason why they are be called sympathetic sounding strings. And so when I tune, and there is actually also some old uh, tuning uh, videos on my channel, I should make new ones, I think. I put damping cloth on the sympathetic strings because uh, they somewhat differ the sound in a way that's difficult to hear the exact pitch. And we might demonstrate that. So does it influence the sound of the clavichord immensely, really? So how are we going to demonstrate that? Um, first with some music. I've recently recorded Beethoven's Waldstein. We do some parts of that. I will ask Anya just to put the cloth on and take it off while I'm playing. I will be repeating the same parts over and over again. And then do some buckle bell to have a completely other style of music and see what the effect is there. In some passages, the influence will be bigger, and probably the more forte it goes, the better, the more influence it has. I can even imagine at the beginning of the Waldstein that it, that there would be a positive influence for the uh, more drier sound, actually. Okay, I just played the beginning. switching off this microphone now so that you have the clear sound of the clavichord so the sound between my introduction and this my, my voice might differ so that's the reason a passage like this you can take it off now to make sound when the when the damping cloth is on. Let's try it again. Thank you. 
do that again. Off and then on. Off, off, yes. It's like taking the instrument into a recording studio which has a really very 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 ten big tendency towards a neutral acoustics really great for for uh, electronic music like pop music and, and things like that but not acoustical instruments so it, it mutes the sound incredibly if you if you what we, we start with uh, clothing off to have this difficult choral passage and I talked about that in the uh, section on the afterthoughts video on the sonata which is difficult on clavichord to make it a kind of legato like it's really hard but if you put the cloth on it becomes impossible impossible but anyway it's, it's it's much more much much drier uh, let's see here and then we go to Pachelbel just off. yeah off yeah so this is a passage where you have this big climax to so let's see how that re react The, the cathedral of the clavichord. So for uh, all the music like Paco Bell, it's actually the same. Okay, let's let, okay let's start with a, with a very delicate passage. I just play a few bars and start all over again, and Anya will put the damping float on. like an echo chamber and we have it back here so then some 16 notes might be interesting to have that as well and then I think we have covered much aspects of that. So here, with without the damping clock. I'm not saying that it is not sounding okay with that because with, with Pachelbel you have a clear um, notes become a little bit more clearer, more drier, more more articulated, but you miss the cathedral effect as I would call it, and um, you're actually muting as well some of the capacity of the soundboard. So sympathetic 
sympathic sounding strings on a clavichord, I cannot speak for other instruments, but uh, and I cannot speak of all for all types of the clavichord, of course. I'm much related to this instrument, but on this instrument, it's really important and it gives much of the color and uh, the dynamic range even. It helps, it emphasizes, it is the amplifier. It works 100% uh, along with the soundboard. So, having said that, I hope that the demonstration was clear. Thank you, Anya, for helping us. And if you have... I have one question. One question. Yes. How would you play when you spin on this? Is this would, me? You, would you play the same? <laughs> my eyes or my mouth? <laughs> I don't know. Your eyes, I think. My eyes, okay, yeah. <laughs> I would play the same when my mouth would be muted because I'm not talking normally when I play. And certainly when I play Beethoven, that's really difficult. So, again, thank you, Anya. <laughs> okay. And um, if you have your own question, please don't hesitate to ask me. You know we're doing this every Wednesday, except for the Wednesdays that have music videos of afterthought videos, and it's for the next week. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with all your friends, and we see each other very soon again. Bye.